Hey guys, it's Samuel Larson here from crogurus.com and today we are going to take a look at site speeds and more specifically the waterfall graph. So the waterfall graph, if you're not familiar with it, and mostly likely you aren't, so I'll go slowly, is this uh, particular graph where you will have what uh, you are loading, when it's loading, how long it takes, how big is it, and uh, all these different things. We'll dive into that uh, soon. The point here is that the page loading times are a combination of smaller elements that you are loading. So if you understand the smaller elements, you will understand the bigger picture as well. And as a particular example, I've chosen this category page from Amazon because everyone knows that Amazon puts quite a bit of resources into their site and also make sure that their servers are very good, etc. Now, if you look at this uh, report, actually, you see the fully loaded time for this page is 8.1 seconds. Now, Google recommends that pages load under three or four seconds. So this is uh, very, very slow. And there's a reason for that. And the reason can be found from the waterfall graph. So if you look at this, we see that the page is actually pretty fast because uh, it's interactive in 1.4 seconds, which is about as quick as it gets in e-commerce. But the fully loaded time is slow. And this is very common because there's uh, multiple things that can slow down the fully loaded time. For the waterfall report, I'm going to use a report from GT Metrics. There is also an option to get uh, this report from Google Chrome. So if uh, you go to the particular page you want to analyze, you can either go here to inspect or you can press F12 to open this. And then you would go to network and here you will see the page. But I usually recommend this uh, select a device and then press Ctrl F5 to refresh this particular page. And as you can see, it's loading and it will give you data here in terms of like how many requests, how many pings back and forth are there between your computer and the server, how much data is transferred, what's uh, the total number, total amount of resources. For example, you might have something saved on your computer already, and then you have the finish time. And then there's a couple of other metrics here as well. And the main thing here is the waterfall report. And let's jump back into the GT metrics part. This is a fairly similar report. It's just, a, in my view, a little bit easier to read from GT metrics and a little bit easier to comprehend as well. So I'll use this for the explanation. For this, let's break this into its parts. So here we have the URL. So what is being loaded? So for example, if it's an image, you can just click on here and you can see the image. Similarly in Google Chrome, you can just click on it, you can see the image. This is very useful because you'd want those images that are on top of the page to load quicker. So this, for example, is one of the earliest images on the page, not much the first one. So it should load before this one. So this uh, order right here is uh, definitely correct. But you'd often see this being completely backwards. So maybe the developer has added something to the page and it's uh, loading in the wrong order. They don't need to often care because it's very rare that they would be caught on it unless uh, they, of course, meet their match on the zero department. Now, file. Uh, what files can also be very useful is understanding if it's, for example, an app or an extension. So oftentimes the file name or the hover will tell you a little bit about that particular one. For example, I got here, you have the Clavio. Uh, is here, telemetricsclavio.com. Here's uh, some other thing, but mostly you'll see um, CDNs. Fresh chance seems to be here. So, for example, those are some of the apps in this particular example. So, I jumped the size from the Amazon example to show you a Shopify example with uh, different apps. All right, let's jump in, back into that Amazon example. I'll go over the next parts. So, next we will have the status code. You very rarely see something that starts with one, so 100, 101. These are very rare, usually informational ones. What you'll see mostly are the 200s, 2xx numbers, and those are the successful ones. That's what you'd want to see mostly here. 301s, 302s are redirects. They're not terrible. It's uh, okay. Like sometimes it's just easier to do a redirect. And then you have your four XXX status codes. So 400, 400, uh, 404, for example, is a page not found. 
So that's uh, an error requesting something from uh, the client side. So for example, the server might not uh, fetch that page. 500s are if, uh, for example, the server is not available at all. Uh, 400s, if you have those on 500s as well, they can slow down your site. So you would not want to have them ideally at all. And if there are 301s, 302s, you want them to typically happen later on on the page as well, so they don't hurt the actual loading experience. So that's the URL, that's the status, then the domain. Domain is more self-explanatory. It's uh, where is this asset loading from. So for example, on uh, the Shopify example, you will see a lot of uh, CDN Shopify.com. That's the Shopify CDN. And then apps will load something from their own servers, etc. This is also a nice thing if you are uninstalling apps. You can see if there's those uninstalled apps are still active and trying to do things. All right, jumping into the next one, we have the size. So here, simply how big the asset is. And usually what you can do here as well is uh, order it by size. And this way you can see if there's something that is uh, just way too big. So for example, this is almost uh, one megabyte. And uh, you can then see like, perhaps uh, this image uh, might be a little bit uh, too big, too optimal for that particular use scenario. That's uh, something to play around with and see if you can bring that uh, size down a little bit. Just uh, save the original image and try to optimize it further. And you can see in general with Shopify, these are tricky to optimize because they are already using their own web fonts or picture style, I should say. But sometimes you still see that there might be some leftovers. So for example, this uh, particular one could perhaps be optimized if it's uh, something that could be run through an image optimization. But it is, uh, as you can see here, it is already on the WebP format when it is loaded from the Shopify CDN. So with images, uh, you typically don't have that much uh, optimization room. All right, moving on from the size to the actual timeline. The timeline, you can see a few different things. The first thing is uh, these lines. These are your timelines for the page load. So if you look at this here, you have your first contentful paint, you have your largest contentful paint usually, you have your time to interactive, then you also have your fully loaded one. So it's here. And all of those are thin on the timeline, so you can see them as uh, these kind of things here. So this is uh, the fully loaded one. It's the same with uh, Google Chrome. So let's have a little bit of a different setup here with loaded uh, and unloaded. So that's the first thing. Both Google Chrome and GT Matrix have this nice functionality that you can often just uh, click and hover over things and uh, they will explain what uh, things mean. So for example, with the waterfall, you can often see what happens in that particular instance. So with this PNG, what exactly happened here? So it was looking for the domain name server, then it took the initial cons connection, there was an SSL, and there, there was a little bit of waiting time. So it was uh, perhaps loading some other assets before it got uh, to this one. And then once it got here, it actually loaded it really, really quickly because it's uh, just a super tiny one. These particular colors can vary a little bit between the different software and systems. So GT Matrix uses slightly different colors than uh, Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge, but it's uh, still the same system. You can just hover over it and they will remind you what these colors are about. So here you can see a similar waiting time, uh, similar systems in general. Now, I wanna circle back to the beginning of the video and state like, why does fully loaded time really not matter? Why is it quite irrelevant? on the grand scheme of things. But before I do that, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure to do that right now. We put out uh, great videos every Thursday. And if you are interested in working with us, go to crowcross.com for us as apply and take a look at what you find. Now, uh, there's a, a few different of these elements. So I'm gonna go over and show you a 4X uh, slowed down video of a page load. Now this is paused here at 1.4 seconds. You see this, and then I'm gonna pause it here on the two seconds. Now. This page right now is fully usable at this point, like, or at least you can start reading it. And reading this 
takes a few seconds on its own already. So from this perspective, two seconds is uh, how long the page took to load. But uh, according to this page uh, speed uh, analysis software, you still have uh, quite a bit of time afterwards, like 10.8 seconds until this was fully here and fully loaded was 6.1. Now, what explains that? Oftentimes, you can just see it on the waterfall. So in this uh, particular example, you can see at the end of the waterfall, everything has uh, loaded pretty well. It's 1.9 seconds here, uh, up until this point. But there's just a couple of resources that uh, take a lot longer. And these are affecting the total load time. Because uh, the way these software analyze it is that they will actually wait after this uh, particular one. They wait after each asset for a few seconds. I think it's 5.5 .5 on this particular one. And then they will see if there's something else to be loaded. And then they will see if there's something else to be loaded. And then they will wait for five and a half seconds again. And if there's nothing, it will state, okay, 8.1 seconds it is. So that's how we have it here. These are often completely irrelevant for the actual user experience. So it can be, for example, Hotjar tags. It can often be Google Tag Manager tags, etc. that are important for the store owner, for sure but they're not as important for the user. So the user can still use the page and these don't hurt that experience at all. So to summarize, um, your fully loaded time doesn't matter. People talk about page load times because this is what they can understand. Look for these two numbers first, time to interactive, and then also first contentful paint, which uh, is something that you can usually see from these metrics. Where to use the Google Chrome or Google Edge or Microsoft Edge, you can look for this loaded time here, the 2.83 seconds in this particular case. And that will give you a good uh, insight into particular page speed. Also, I'd recommend to test uh, not only your front page, but also the other popular pages, because uh, everyone is just testing their front page and it's not really necessarily indicative of uh, how the site performance is in general. And, uh, one thing there is slow it down. So what you can do is either do this kind of uh, slowdowns of the load, one thing that you can do it with, for example, Google Chrome is just use this throttling. There's another video of that on my channel. And this way you can see how the page loads uh, bit by bit. So are we getting the right things to show at the right order? Yeah. So that's uh, very useful. And uh, here you can see it in action. The images are just now appearing bit by bit. So that uh, looks like it's just about the right order for Amazon. And then lastly, I recommend using a software like uh, GT Metrics for most part because they also explain things very well. So you don't have to be a page speed expert to use this kind of software because uh, every single element that you want to understand, there is uh, an explanation for it here as well. So it makes it easy. But at the end of the day, you're probably a marketer, you're an e-commerce store owner for the reason that you just want to sell, you don't necessarily want to get uh, all that complicated with this. If you are looking for a store optimization expert or an agency to help your store grow from where you are currently to where you actually could be, then don't hesitate to go to growbush.com for us as apply and take a look. If you like the video, like the video. Thank you very much. I'll see you on the next one.